Don't you just love when Waylon attacks the prayer, you know, don't you ever turn your back on me, and, you know, the predator is like, oh no, you sort of sensed me a little bit, I will kill you now. If the queen knew that the chestburster was inside of the predator, why did it stab through, you know, his overall, I would say in his stomach maybe, wouldn't it want it to survive, wouldn't it try to attack in some other way? And I've heard some claim that it was lower than the chestburster was, but when the predator looks at, I don't know, Italian dude, Why is the chest burster then right down there in the stomach? I'm pretty sure it wasn't the chest, it was the stomach when it uses the view. How many view modes do they have? They keep. We see way too much of them through the view modes. We kind of did in the second one too, but you know, in the first Predator there's an appropriate amount. It has that kind of, they're watching thing. It doesn't matter if we're seeing the predators, we don't need to constantly see how they view the world, okay? It's not... If there isn't some effect from it, why are you bothering? Also about that Anderson is way too in love with showing a 3D map of something and then going into that and going to the real location. He does this in Resident Evil also. And I think the third of those, he goes pretty nuts with it. And there might be a little bit of it in Afterlife as well. It's pretty clear that the Black Lady Lex is a Ripley knockoff, but why doesn't she care when, you know, everybody around her dies? I mean, if that was something they got from Ripley, and it appears to be a character trait of hers, you know, early on she's like, we have this rules, and don't do this, don't do that, because I don't let anybody die from, you know, dozens of people die over the course of the movie, and near the end she isn't really showing much reaction. Granted, this is a fault uh, as much of the writing as of the acting, but yeah. Apparently the idea with the chest burster coming out of this predator at the end wasn't sequel baiting, it was to kind of let the aliens also win, you know, not decide on a winner. I personally think that they already kind of won, I mean, okay, so they didn't survive there, but I would say that the aliens kicked more ass in this movie than the Predators did. The two Predators died way too fast. How about that big wrestling match where, you know, the Predator and the alien are throwing each other around. Big fight, the Predator wins, he's about to kill, and then the alien gets him with ease. You know, it, it just kills the suspense. At one point, at, at some point, it, do, it stops being even surprising in Anderson's movies, because he does in almost every single one. He has incredibly powerful creatures suddenly killed with ease, and he has weak creatures or characters suddenly, you know, be much more dangerous. Like with Wayland, you know, suddenly flamethrower action, you know. It just doesn't have an effect. 
it barely even does the first time when we are still surprised by it. Like I already said, Anderson keeps having way too much, you know, there's way too much predator tech in this. He keeps throwing these new things towards, and, you know, having too many monsters show up in a single scene. How about when that guy is, you know, he has the two guns, he's down in the, the tunnel, and he looks at one alien and then says, yeah, I'm gonna kill you, you know, just come on and get me. And then another one shows up next to him. And then another one on the... So what? It... That, that isn't effective. I mean, maybe have one show up or something. I mean, it's not like you need to have a lot of aliens for them to be scary. It's not like the Predators need to have a ton of new technology to be impressive. If you don't think you can do a good job without kicking it into overdrive like that, then maybe you shouldn't be making the movie. In fact, maybe the movie shouldn't be made at all. And... I also, of course, have to address. They have a human and a predator working together in this. You know, this happens some in the comics as well, and elsewhere. It is just a bad idea. The moment these creatures lose their mystique, the moment we get to look at them for a certain amount of time and get used to them, they're no longer effective. You know, this happens with the slasher killers as well. When you make enough movies, sooner or later, we're just used to, you know, that's how they roll. You know, that's... It just doesn't keep being effective and... You know, in this, actually having a predator work with an alien, I get how it works. You know, she killed the alien, she saved his life, and still, it just, I mean, when you see it use sign language to say that it's a bomb, that's one of the most embarrassing things you've ever seen a predator do, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. I get it. It's, it's because the humans have to be a central part of the story, and they're not. It just isn't that good of an idea, you know? I mean, in this one, they aren't even battling for, like, control of Earth, you know? It's not like some kind of... It's just... Okay, the aliens can't get to the surface because, you know, they might be able to tolerate the extreme cool, coldness, whatever. And if they get to civilization, we're screwed. I get that. Once they are dead, there isn't really... And it's not like the Predator really badly needs help. Well, okay, maybe it does in this movie, but it shouldn't. If the Predators don't take enough care to make sure that people don't screw with their setup, you know, when the humans pick up the shoulder cannons, then 
how exactly are they keeping the aliens under control? I mean, the Queen didn't have that much trouble getting loose in this movie. How aren't all of their planets already overrun? You know, I mean, in Alien it is suggested that the aliens aren't indigenous to that planet, so they can travel through space, you know, they, you know, the infamous space jockey, so... I personally wouldn't be, you know, playing with fire that kind of way. And we also get way too much insight into the alien... I mean, why they do what they do. Again, I guess it's... Well, in this case, it's because they don't think that we can handle not knowing every single answer. And yes, yes, maybe people, after watching some of these movies, come up with answers. But if they're good answers... Questions. If they're good questions, why do you care? I mean, if people are not watching them just because they don't find out everything, then I'm sorry, wake up, welcome to storytelling. When you're telling a story, you're not supposed to go into every single last detail. You can't. Imagine if every time you heard a story about some people who also found out what their parents were like, and their parents, and their parents, because it's all facts, you know, it's all part of the information. That's not what a story is. A story is a small snippet of an overall, you know, it's not just, it starts and then it ends and absolutely nothing happened before or after that, well, some stories are like, mythology and such, but... If you tell people absolutely everything, they might leave not having any questions unanswered, but I don't think that they're as satisfied as those who do leave with interesting questions. I think that is the whole point of any kind of expression, you know, it makes people feel and or think. If we're told what to feel and think, we don't leave satisfied. Anyway, an example is that the aliens, you know, when they stop running towards, when, when, S not Scar, what's it called? The one that was caught in the net. Grid. The alien grid. We don't just see it run away from the Predator and then later see it turn up that the Alien Queen. Because that would mean that we could think maybe it ran away because it could see that they were getting overpowered by the Predator. And then when it shows up at the Queen, we can further theorize or maybe it just wanted to help out the Queen and could see that there was nothing here. That leaves us with two theories and we can think and we can, you know, we can argue for the theories. We can try to figure out which we like best, which we think fits the most. But, as it is, the movie just tells us, nope, the Alien Queen called it back and it ran back to the Alien Queen. You know, it's... We're finding out too much. And then it growls and snarls orders at them and they're standing there like puppet troops, and, you know, then it's, I mean, I get that they're using the acid to make it escape, not that that was Anderson's own idea, you know, he quite obviously ripped that off, and just, it's just much more effective when we don't know everything, we also don't need to see so much of the predator, you know, them approaching and I get that that was set up and build up and such, but look at Predator. Look at the setup and build up there. We hear little noises. Maybe we see a sort of rustling in a tree. And it's the jungle. It's like everything around you is alive, you know? It's, it's that kind of thing of, did I just see something? Because we've already all experienced that. But when we're just seeing straight out, you know, technology, 
it just isn't as effective. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Alien vs. Predator. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.